We are each of us special, each unique, from the tops of our heads to the bottom of our feet. Uh, whether we're on the sidewalk or in a car, different is the you that you are. And it's not just place, it's the role that you take, it's the expectations that people have on you, the shoes you wear, uh, what you are doing, what, what your title is, it's all going to change how the you you are is expressed and it can maybe make the you who you are completely different from any you that you would ever imagine. And so it is true for everyone, I believe, and so it is well illustrated in this game, Pixel Tactics 3. Pixel Tactics 3 is a card game whose cards are all in the same format. If you see, the card has different sections and it can be turned this way or this way. Each of these sections relates to a particular place or way you use the card. Uh, so there's five different ways you can use each individual card based on how you use it and where it's placed. And so in Pixel Tactics 3, each card is an individual that you're going to have to determine what station they have in this moment in time or in this life. To start the game off, you have the biggest distinction to make, and that is which individual is going to be named, which is going to be the leader of your unit, your squad of fighters, and thus remembered by history. Each player only gets one leader. That leader has a name and also names the squad. The named leader also has a passive effect, and if the named leader is to die, then that player loses the game. The named leader is turned this way instead of this way and placed on the center of your 3x3 three three grid. This is how the game would look when you start playing. If we deem our Doc Silnan isn't important enough to have a name, we flip him over and he is just a role assistant. And that role is going to be different based on where he's placed in our 3x3 three three grid. So if we place him in the front, he's going to be in the vanguard. And he's going to be a vanguard assistant and this is going to be his ability. If we place him beside the leader on either side in what's called the flank, flanking the leader, then we use this green one. And if we place him in the rear, any of these three spaces in the rear, then he's going to be using this thing. We can also use our assistant here, who was formerly known as Doc Silnan in another reality, um, as a one-time use effect. Um, and then we just play it as an action, and then we do what it says here. You may have noticed these numbers here. These are the attack, that's the damage that the, that the doctor would do if he's Doc Silden, if he's named, and then his health. That's how much health he has. If that goes to zero, he dies. Um, the assistant has very different attack and health, so it's a lot better to be considered an individual worthy of a name than merely a representation of an occupation. The flow of the game takes place in what is known as waves. So first both players choose their leaders from a hand of five cards, and then the first player is going to do two actions in what's called his vanguard row. Okay, so we've got uh, three rows and three columns, right? Vanguard row. So they get two actions. Um, basically the row matters in what you activate. So if you, act, if you attack with a, a card, it's gotta be in the row that's activated. You can always draw as an action, you can um, move cards around as an action from different places. So if we wanted to move um, this elementalist here over here, that would be an action. You can clear away corpses as an action. Um, you can put down new cards, recruit, but then those have to be in the row specified. So after the first player has done two actions in this vanguard row, the second player will have done two actions, and we decide to put our doctor in assistant form here. And then the first player is going to do two actions in the next row, which is the flanking row. And then the second player is going to do two actions in the flanking row. The first player is going to do two actions in the rear row here. And then the second player is going to do two actions in the rear row. And then they swap cards. So at the end of a at the end of a series of waves, a round, I guess, um, whoever is the second player is going to start the next round. So they kind of get two turns in a row. Now, personally, I love games like uh, Innovation and Battlecon, where you have these these verbal elements in this this system, and there's lots of room to explore ways of combining disparate verbal ele elements in order to create 
different effects that maybe even the game's designer didn't come up with. It's kind of sandboxy in a way, and that's always fun. Even if you're getting slaughtered in those games, it's still fun because you're, you're able to kind of just play around and have a great time. Um, allows for some creativity, and I enjoy that. This is a game like that. Uh, they're beyond just, just determining where this individual, what their kind of place in your army structure is going to be. Um, also based on how they are positioned in relation to each other uh, also matters. And I think that's true of us as well. The people you're around uh, define you uh, beyond the role that you have, but just in their effect on you as a person. Let's look. Alright, so here our would-be doctor is in his assistant role. He's in the vanguard of our unit, sitting here in the front lines, but he is not alone. So, um, first of all, he has his ability. He's the only one who can be targeted by melee attacks in this whole unit, so he's going to be taking the brunt of the attack. Now, he has some help, though. So, one, he, right behind him, in what's called a supporter, is this calculator here. Um, Forerunner, it says. Now, the supporter is in the flank position, so it's going to be using this green one. The Forerunner, that's the assistant, our would-be doctor, has a bonus of attack strength equal to the supporter's attack strength. So, then we got to look at the calculator's attack, uh, the calculator's supporter, which is this galaxy maze down here, so attack strength of four. So, the calculator is going to be giving the assistant an attack bonus of four. That, that brings it up to three there. And then we have Dispatcher over here, which is going to give him another plus one, and a Brawler, which gives him another plus one. So there's kind of, you know, based on the column and the row you're in, you can get these kind of relative abil or the, these um, synergistic effects from your friends. Not always synergistic, but sometimes just helpful. Um, and then back here, plus one, da-da. Okay, and this, and this general down here gives him another two life, which is helpful because he's going to be taking a lot of the hits due to, due to his own ability. Before concluding, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the, um, the kind of the authorial touch touches that this game and its sister game, Battlecon, have in common. And that is um, just the, 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 full, the, the characters feel fully realized. They feel like they're actually from a world and that they have some relationship and there's a consistency there that um, makes what could be like a very like fun, quick, um, explorative, gamey uh, situation have a certain depth where you kind of think about these people outside of the game and what their personalities are like and I think that's, that's really nice. Um, there are other Pixel Tactics games, one and two they are all the same game. They're just, they're different cards, but they're the same game. So you can mix them together, from what I understand, and have a lot of fun with that, as I've had a lot of fun with Pixel Tactics 3.